Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, sort the jumbled numbers. Another sorting problem, but the problem description honestly is kind of confusing. I'll be focusing on the example. So first of all, the idea is we're given a list of numbers like this. And we want to sort these numbers, but as you can see in the output, it's not going to be a traditional sort. We're given another array. And this one is always going to be of size 10. That's very important because what this means is at this position, index zero, it means that the number zero maps to the number eight. And so over here, it means the number nine, the digit nine maps to the digit six. So you can imagine that that's kind of the case with all of these. So if we're given an array that looks like this, we can take each number and get the real number that it maps to. So if 991, well, it's going to be nine maps to six. So we can go digit by digit six. Once again, six, one is going to map to nine. So this is going to be six, six, nine. We can do the same with the others. So I'll go quickly. This one actually is a bit interesting. So three maps to zero. So this one you can see is going to be zero, zero, seven. They probably did that on purpose. Now I'm starting to think they did this one on purpose as well. <laughs> so if there's leading zeros, obviously this number, the real number it represents is just going to be seven. And we can continue with this. I think this is also zero seven. So both of these are seven. They both evaluate to seven. So given these numbers, six, six, nine, seven, and seven, how would you sort them? Well, in ascending order, they'd look like this, seven, seven, six, six, nine. But the question becomes, well, which seven will go first? How do we break the tie? Or maybe it doesn't matter. Well, in this problem, it does matter. The way we will break that tie is based on the original position of the tie. So assume that there are two elements that map to the same element. This one is at index one. This one is at index two. Since this one shows up first, that means it's going to show up first in the output. This one showed up second, so it's going to show up second in the output. Now, if we wanted to take these and then convert them back into what they originally were, we'd get 338 as the first one, 38 as the second, and then 991 as the third. And that is the expected output, as you can see up above. Conceptually, the problem isn't crazy. There are multiple ways to solve it, but you're almost certainly going to need some kind of custom sort implemented, right? Obviously, you're going to need to do something to map the original values to what the true values that they actually represent using this mapping. There are a couple ways to do that. I think it makes more sense to show that in the code. So that's what I'm going to do. The easiest way would be to convert each of these numbers into a string, which should be possible, I think, in most languages. And then once it's a string, you can go character by character. The reason we're converting it into a string is because it's easier to iterate over a string. If you just have a number like this, it is possible to iterate over the digits. And I'll show you how we can do that, actually, in the second solution. But it's just a bit more difficult to implement involves a bit more math and arithmetic. Um, but getting back to this, if we can obviously map each of these to the other, we can create a string or just the number itself that this represents, which I think was 669. And then we can implement the custom sort by using the mapped value as like the first key. So this is the first key that we will use to sort the numbers. But in case there's a tie, we will break that tie with a second key, which will be the index of each value that we have in the input. So if we can sort them, and the way I'm going to do it in Python is by taking this input array and creating a new list of pairs where the first pair will be the mapped value. I'll just call it map for short. This is going to be like this in this example. The second is going to be the index, which of course is just the index that each number shows up in. So the reason I'm not including the original value itself is because once we sort these pairs, we can then rebuild the sorted array with the original numbers by just taking the index of each pair and then mapping it to the value because we're not sorting the input array. We are not modifying the input array. We're creating a new array of pairs, sorting that and then getting the original values. If it doesn't make sense right now, don't worry. I think the code will probably clear up your confusion. The time complexity of this is going to be bottlenecked by the sorting, which is going to be n log n. 
and uh, additional space I think is O of N. So what I'm gonna do is iterate over the input nums, but I'm gonna use enumerate because I do want the index as well as the number itself. Then I'm going to convert each number to a string. So like this, and I'm gonna go through each character in that number. Now it's a character, we wanna convert it to an integer because then we can index the mapping array. So then we can do something like this, mapping, now get the actual digit that this corresponds to. Now, how do we build the final integer? You could use like a list, I'm gonna call it mapped n, and you could use a list and this could be converted into a string and then you could append that to this and then you could join all of the strings together. That is a valid way. But another way is going to be actually a little bit easier, but it does involve a tiny bit of math. So watch this. I'm going to take mapped n and I'm going to add to it this digit. So imagine this digit was six, for example, right? We add six to zero. Well, that's great. And then suppose the next digit is six as well. Obviously, if we were to add that digit to mapped n, we would get 12. That's not quite what we want, right? So what I'm gonna do is actually, we have six. Before I add the next digit, I'm gonna multiply this by 10. It's gonna be 60. The reason I did that is because it's basically shifting all the digits to the left so that then we have an empty spot for the next digit. So right before I have this line, I'm gonna do this, mapped n, is gonna be multiplied by 10. In the first case, mapped n is zero, so multiplying it by 10 isn't gonna do anything, but in the next case, it'll turn it into 60, and then we add six to it, great. Now we do the same thing, suppose the next digit was nine. Multiply it by 10, we get this, and then add the digit nine, we get this, 669. That's the idea behind what I'm doing here. It's not like a lot of code, but it is a little mathy, so wanted to explain it. After we're done with that, we want to take this number and the index and add it to some list. And I'm gonna declare that up here. It's gonna be called pairs. And then right down here, I'm gonna say pairs dot append this pair mapped n and the index i. The great thing about Python is we don't really need like a custom comparator. We don't need to implement that but I'm pretty sure you could implement the same logic in Java. It would just take a bit more code. But all I'm gonna do now is just call pairs.sort. It will use this first value in the pair as the sort key. If there's a tie, it will use the next one. So after sorting, uh, we can then just convert each pair into the original value. I think if we really wanted, we actually could have just sorted the input array. I guess the main reason to not do that is because it's better to not modify the inputs if you don't have to, so that's why I'm doing it this way. But if you wanted to, I guess you could call nums.sort and then for the custom key, you could probably pass in um, the corresponding pair. But anyways, the easiest way to convert these pairs into the original value is to use the list comprehension in Python. I cover this on NeatCode.io. If you're interested in the Python for Coding Interviews course, go through every pair in the list of pairs and then to this list here, add, first of all, get the index. We want the second value in the pair. So the index will be at here, P at index one. And then for that, we want the original value. So we can say nums of this, and that will be the number that we add to this list, and that will be what we end up returning. Not sure what's going on with the syntax highlighting here. Do I have a bug somewhere that I'm not seeing? Um, I'm gonna try running the code. Oh, I did, and it's very silly up here, actually. So we forgot to put the keyword in. I'm sorry about that. Let's try that again. But you can see that this code works. It's pretty efficient. I'll show you another solution that is technically just as efficient. And I'm only doing it because I know somebody's gonna complain if I don't, but it just involves a bit more math. So we wanna avoid possibly doing that string conversion. Maybe in another language that you're using, it's harder to do this. So let's get rid of that line right there. And then, so instead of going through every character, let's say while this number is uh, greater than zero or not zero. So we could say this, but it's equivalent to doing this in Python. So what we wanna do is pretty much what we were doing before, but the way to get a digit from something like n, suppose it was a 991. It's harder to get this digit first. So the easiest way to do this is to go from right to left. So this is the first digit we're gonna get. How do we get it? It's not too bad. Just take n 
mod it by 10 and then we get the digit. Now after we get the digit, we probably want to get rid of that so that we just have 99 remaining for the next iteration. So immediately I'm going to say take n and set it to n divided by 10. This is integer division in Python. It'll round down, which basically will get rid of the ones place. Okay, so now we have the digit. What do we do to mapped n? Well, we definitely don't want to multiply this by 10 because to mapped n, um, which I'll draw down here, it's initially zero. We want to add the digit that we just got. It was one, and let's say it maps to nine. So we would add nine to the output, but we don't want to like multiply this by 10 because remember the original thing that we had was 991. We want this to be the first digit, and then we want this one, which let's say corresponds to six, to be added here. And then when we get to this digit, we want that to be added here. So we're not going to have this. What we're going to do is add it to here, which we don't really need to do the integer conversion here. We can just say mapping of the digit. We want to add it, but the next iteration, we want to add the digit to the tens place. And the next one, we want to add it to the hundreds place. So what I'm going to do is have a, another variable, which I'm going to call the base. Initially, it's going to be one. And this base is going to be multiplied by the digit every single time. So base times the digit. And then the base is going to be multiplied by 10 every single time, which tells us that the next time we want to look at the tens place and then multiply it again. Next time we want to look at the hundreds place. So just a little bit of math there. And this is pretty much the entire solution, believe it or not. Like that's all you had to change. But there actually is a bug. And I'm not going to pretend to you that I came up with this by myself. I ran this code, which I'll run for you right now. And we'll see that there is a bug. I'll let you try to figure out what the bug is on your own if you want, but it doesn't take too long to recognize that it looks like we had zero in the wrong spot. It looks like zero is supposed to, uh, it's here, index zero should map to nine. Therefore, it should be in the last spot. It should have the highest value. But we don't have that handled here. Why do you think that is? Well, it might look more clear when I say while n is greater than zero. We're not handling the case where the number itself is equal to zero and it maps to something else. So the easiest way, at least in my opinion, to handle that is when n is equal to zero. Let's just say a mapped n will just be whatever its mapping happens to be because this loop will not execute for that. It will consider zero as a zero, even if zero is supposed to map to something else. If that's the case though, we won't expect this loop to execute because that'll only happen if n is a single zero. I don't think we can have multiple zeros in a number. I mean, by definition, we can't like with the way things are coded. Maybe if it was a list of strings. But anyways, that will handle that edge case. I believe this code is correct. Let's run it. And you can see it works. It's also very efficient. The time complexity, as you can kind of tell, is pretty much the same. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io. Got a lot of cool things coming and hopefully I'll see you soon.